Have you ever wondered which 3D printed mechanism would be the best to count screws? In this video we will test a new counting mechanism for the modular production system. During the last years I've manually packaged and counted thousands of different screws, nuts and washers. All for 3D printed parts that I sell online. So I use 3D printing, PCB design and other processes to build an automatic screw counting machine. The design is based on some fundamental principles and it is parametric, so it should work for a variety of conveyed parts. In this video series, I will go over the components and how I built them. If all goes well, the videos will end with a working modular production system. In the last video we talked about the dispenser mechanism and how it counts exact numbers of screws from the magazine. In the current version of the dispenser, the screws, after coming from the separator and stacking up in the magazine, are counted using two solenoids. I called that the alternating approach. There were several drawbacks to this variant. Most importantly that the spacing between the solenoids is fixed and that to dispense varying numbers of screws a new mount for the solenoids has to be printed first. That was why I presented some alternative, more flexible metering methods. And I got a lot of great comments from you um, with great suggestions about other mechanisms that we could try. The most popular idea was to use some sort of a sprocket to block the feeding path for the screws instead of using two solenoids. I actually considered a really similar idea to that um, a while ago, but at that time I decided against a stepper motor based approach um, and why I did that and if that has been a mistake um, later in the video. The idea behind this procket is simple. A comment from Gnetzworm was very specific and this basic design here is based on his comment. The individual teeth of the sprocket reach into the magazine and block the screws. Driving the sprocket now we can eject the parts. How many parts are ejected is determined by the degree of rotation. There are several challenges. The sprocket must be rotated with a fairly high degree of accuracy, especially to avoid tolerance stack up after several metering passes. There are a lot of different options to control the rotation precisely. The simplest option would be to connect the stepper motor directly to the sprocket. Stepper motors are motors that divide the full rotation into a number of equal steps. This allows us to achieve a desired rotational position precisely, unlike normal DC motors. However, directly mounting a stepper has some disadvantages. Depending on how high the screws stack up over the dispenser, um, there's quite a lot of load on the sprocket. And therefore the stepper motor has to apply a high holding torque just to stop the sprocket from rotating. And what happens if the machine is switched off and... While the screws stack up in the magazine, there is always a small impact coming from the next screw that stacks up. And I think the stepper bearings would be grateful if we would not more or less directly transfer that impact down through the screws and onto the stepper bearings. Since the whole system is parametric and it should work for a variety of screws and nuts and washers and so on, um, the sprocket, which is individual for each screw type, has to be easily replaceable or changeable. This is easier if it isn't attached directly to the stepper. One alternative to a direct stepper motor would be a Geneva drive. This is one of those mechanisms that you look at once and immediately have to think it's cool. Um, it is used a lot in watches and was used in the past in old film projectors. The input shaft connects to a normal DC motor and the gearbox converts the continuous rotation of the DC motor into discrete um, steps similar to a stepper motor. In the past Geneva drives have been used much more but as stepper motors and servos got cheaper and cheaper in the recent years um, their popularity has declined. However the good thing about the Geneva drive is that unlike a stepper motor it is self-locking. If there is no power at all applied to it um, you still can't turn it so there will be no falling screws. As much as I would like to use it, I think it can't really match the speed at which a stepper motor or a solenoid approach can operate. And I would like to have the dispenser to work as instant and as fast as possible. So what are we going to do now? It follows the geared stepper approach. For this we are going to use bigger bearings on which we are placing the sprocket. 
and I hope that they are going to be more durable to the loads that the system will see. Then we have to somehow couple the stepper motor to the sprocket, and I used a simple gear train for this. This gear train connects the movement of the stepper motor over this middle gear with the sprocket. Another benefit of that is that using the reduction ratio of about 2 to 1, the weight of the screws that is constantly pushing on the sprocket can now be supported by the unpowered holding torque that the stepper motor has due to its magnetic rotor. So even if there is no power at all, the screws will stay in place. Also I designed those gears with a bit of backlash, and this backlash in combination with the somehow flexible mounting structure should hopefully dampen the impact of the new screws sticking up in the magazine. If we now add a simple prototypish mounting structure to it, it looks something like this. So now that we have a plan for a prototype, let's build it. First we print new components. The bottom part of the magazine also needs to be reprinted. Then I insert the bearings. They are press fitted into the printed part. I use a rack pinion press for that. By taking apart a pulley for a GT2 belt, we can repress the core of the pulley into the printed gear. This is by far the best trick to fix something that rotates on an axle in my opinion. Thanks Voron. We can then attach it to the motor shaft using the two grub screws. For the mounting structure, which is a prototype only and therefore looks a bit weird, I use one of my favorite techniques for printed parts that need to be assembled. We sandwich two 3D printed parts with spaces in between and connect it all with long screws. This results in surprisingly stiff assemblies and is easy to design. Okay, so the prototype is ready and I have to say it works really well. This is a video of counting sets of 4 screws. That is the same use case that we did in the last video using the solenoids. The next clip is exactly the same mechanism, but I adjusted the rotation value in the code and now it dispenses 10 screws. That already shows how flexible the mechanism is, and it is also quite fast. This is a video of 60 screws dispensing from the magazine. It takes them around 2.3 seconds. This corresponds to 38 milliseconds per screw, or 26 screws per second. If we slow the clip down, we can also see how consistent it is. The reason why I decided against the stepper motor based approach at that time was that while stepper motors save a lot of mechanical trouble to control the rotation precisely, they add a lot of effort on the electronic side. Controlling a single stepper motor is not that hard, but controlling up to 10 stepper motors simultaneously um, on the whole mixer unit can be a bit challenging. I wanted to avoid giving uh, each dispenser its own brain because brains are expensive, not extremely expensive, but you get the point. But since the whole thing is working so well, I think we will stick to it. I think for modularity reasons, it will be the best to give each dispenser its own controller and let them all communicate with each other via some sort of bus system. The following clip shows the buffer function of the magazine really well. Um, you can see that the screw level drops continuously. We could now connect the separator to fill up the magazine in the meantime. If we want to optimize cost one day, there is also the possibility of a passively driven variant. That would use the preload or the weight of the screws to drive the sprocket. And we could use something like a cheap DC motor as a generator that is coupled via transistor to a power resistor and dissipates all the energy. 
the final stopping of the sprocket would then be performed by some sort of a bistable mechanism. But I have no illusions about how much time the development of that would take, so for now we're going to stick with the really well working stepper based approach. Now that we have tested its basic functionality, the question remains if it is durable and reliable. For that we will bring it into a much more final form with a proper housing um, and its own controller board and I will add some sort of a rotation sensor so we don't have to hard code all the different rotation values for the different sets of screws. Then we will be able to run some durability testing. I already have a lot of ideas for that and if you have any feedback on the video in general or any ideas please share them in the comments that helps me immensely. If you want to see me build those prototypes, then hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.